uh, at every age group, you can basically chart what percentage of the population is tech savvy, right? And understandably, in the early ages, there's a lot of people who are tech savvy, and then as you get past 30 and into 40, it drops off quickly, and the people who are older are less tech savvy, right? So obviously, the non-tech savvy is just the inverse of the tech savvy. So if the, the non-tech savvy looks kind of like this. So the red line is the non-tech savvy, and the blue line is the tech savvy. So the older tech savvy people talking to the younger tech savvy people, that works. No problem. The older non-tech savvy people talking to the younger non-tech savvy people, that also works. Right? The problem is with the older folks who are non-tech savvy trying to talk to the younger folks who are tech savvy. Uh, which, by the way, is essentially what I do for a living, right? I mean, essentially, anyone who's doing internet consulting or internet marketing is teaching, uh, because a lot of business owners are in this space, right? A lot of us, frankly, or some of us anyway, are in this space trying to figure out how to talk to the younger generation, and they speak a different language uh, than we do to a large extent. So I have um, just a couple of examples of how those younger people communicate and think as compared to the older generation. And I'm going to stick with the older generation, younger generation metaphor. There are exceptions on both sides, right? Um, but here's some examples. This is interesting. So the internet is not personal versus the internet is more personal, younger people. Think about how you feel for each one of these. If I need to meet someone face to face to really get to know them versus if I only meet someone face to face, I don't know anything about them. I just know what they look like and I know what their handshake is like. I need to see their website. Now I know something about them. It's interesting, right? Online transactions are not, sec are, are not secure, okay? Versus you want me to write you a check, right, which is a piece of paper that has my account number on it and my address and my name and my signature, right? You think that's secure. The young people would say SSL encryption is a lot more secure. Okay, exactly the opposite. If an online transaction goes wrong, I have absolutely no recourse. Versus, if an online transaction goes wrong, I can personally destroy their reputation. <laughs> Think about the empowerment difference of your audience. Right, ripoffreport.com complaintboard.com, there's a million of them, where you can report bad business behavior. Someone can do that and ruin your business. Someone who's 13 can do that, <laughs> right? How pissed off would you be if that happened? The internet has too many distractions versus I can find precisely what I want online. And finally, the internet has too many scams versus scams are much easier to spot online. Okay, totally different. So. It's just a few examples of how the younger generation is thinking, and maybe there's a few rules of thumb as far as speaking to the younger generation. The first is these people are confident and they are empowered when they're on the internet. They know how to work it. Okay? They don't want to be marketed to. So marketing has to be done totally differently. You have to get permission from them to market to them. You have to build trust first. You have to demonstrate expertise first. You have to make yourself useful first, and then you can market to them. And for them, the internet is a personal place, okay? whether it is for you or not. Um, there's a saying in internet marketing, it's been there for a long time, and it's very common. I'm sure a lot of you have heard it. Content is king. Uh, well, given the social revolution, the social media revolution that's taking place on the internet right now, and it's changing things a lot for, for you know, the internet in general. I would now disagree with that, that statement. I would say that content is queen. Community engagement has taken the top spot. And authenticity and transparency, I would say, come in third. So this is kind of the hierarchy, just, I mean, this is conceptual. But how do you want to talk to these people, maybe according to these rules? So let's uh, just define what community engagement is. What does it mean to, com to engage your community? And do you like my abbreviation here? If you're, I, di I didn't have the space to put it out, so I, I kind of feel like I'm texting. All right. Um, people always say, how do I access my market on the internet? Conversations are markets. If you want to access a market, 
find the conversation and participate in the conversation. If you're participating in the conversation, you are participating in the market. Okay, the two go hand in hand. Contribute value without blatantly over-promoting your product. You want to contribute value first. That's engaging your community without just blatantly selling your product. And lastly, be a person first and a business second. So basic stuff, uh, but I think those are the sorts of rules that can help a business build an audience online where your audience is comprised not only of people your own age, but of people who might be half your age. And those people have more and more money as they're growing older. So they're a significant part of the population.